Welcome to the Praxis Core Writing Subtest, the informational essay, also known as the source based essay, narrated PowerPoint. This presentation is designed to introduce Middlesex's education students to the elements of an organized explanatory essay. Let's take a look at what exactly this essay will be assessing from the eyes of ETS. This is the holistic rubric that they are going to be using to assess the informational essay. I'd like to emphasize the specific elements that are different in the source-based essay than what you were used to in the argumentative essay. I will draw attention to C, where you are going to be drawing evidence from informational text to support analysis. D is somewhat similar to the argumentative essay because you are being asked to develop your ideas logically and making connections. However, in this instance, you're going to also be asked to cite your sources. For E, you're going to be synthesizing information on multiple sources on one subject. And then finally, with F, you are going to be integrating and attributing information from, again, multiple sources, in this case two, on one subject while avoiding plagiarism. So essentially, they are requiring you to cite. The thesis and the facility of the use of language is all content that you would have been used to by now, especially if you have already completed the argumentative slideshow. So let's take a look. Very, very similar to the argumentative essay. A top score for this essay is going to be a six. I'd like to really focus on what a six is going to need. A six is going to explain the concerns with supportive examples, reasons, and details that tie two sources together. You are going to include information from both sources. You will be have a well-organized, clear, articulate, and coherent essay that draws strong connections between various ideas also known as two different sources. You will use a variety of sentence structure, you will have command of the English language, and you will have few, if any, errors. As you know, these are very similar or exactly similar to the same ideas that you have seen with the argumentative essay. These are pretty much the exact same things that you have seen on that holistic rubric. With the informational essay, even though you only have 30 minutes, just like you had with the argumentative essay, it's a little bit more challenging in some ways. And the reason that is, is that not only do you need to read the prompt as you had to previously, then you are going to be having to read passages. Both of these passages are, are kind of long in nature, maybe one or two college level paragraphs. Um, and the reason that I am pointing that out is that it takes a little bit of time to read and digest that information and to pull the ideas that both of the authors are sharing. After you read the topic, the prompt and the passages, you identify the main issue of the texts, and then you identify the direct quotes or paraphrase quotes that you will use to ensure that you are not plagiarizing the content of the sources that ETS has provided. Next, you are going to summarize those main points, synthesizing the ideas and making connections between both of the texts. And again, you are asked to do all of this in just 30 minutes with some time to edit. This is a really, again, a very formidable task, and more students tell me that it's the 30 minutes that happen to really have the major issue with passing this test, not necessarily reading the information and understanding it, or even synthesizing the ideas, but really just being able to gather everything together in only 30 minutes. So right here, I have an example prompt of a source-based essay. This is coming from ETS directly. Um, as you can see, I, I'm not going to read all this to you, but what ETS does is they provide you with some background knowledge. Um, so right up here, you're going to see, you know, brief paragraph that's all going to be focused on copyright protection. And what it's going to ask you to do is then read two different passages. Aside from this, this is just establishing that background knowledge, where you get two sources with two different ideas. You are asked to cite the sources when you're paraphrasing or directly quoting. This is the exact information and the exact information I, uh, bubble that's going to pop up when you are taking the ETS Praxis Core Writing Subtest. Now let's take a look. After you read this, right, you read the background knowledge, you read the directions, you're going to see two really rather extensive essays. Now, this is source one, and you can see that it's coming from McLeod. This was written in 2013. Um, the content isn't really that collegiate in nature. It's not that it's that 
difficult to comprehend, but copyright protection is a little bit of a dry uh, topic, so you really have to figure out exactly what the point and the main ideas of each of these articles are in two different sources. So we have the background from previously, we have source one, and then we have source two. This is from Martin, 2013. So as you can see, your goal is going to be in 30 minutes to read all the information regarding the background, determine what each of these authors, both McLeod and, and Martin, are trying to establish in their essays. You're going to draw information, whether it be direct quotes or paraphrased information, and you are going to synthesize the ideas of both of these authors into a well-constructed explanatory paragraph in just 30 minutes minutes. Now I know that that sounds like a, an incredibly difficult task, so what I have done is created top 10 hints for success on the source-based essay to make sure that students have some self-efficacy going into this exam. So the first thing to keep in mind is to keep the objective of the task in mind. The purpose of this source-based essay, when you take a look at the holistic scoring rubric, has a little bit more depth to it than the argumentative essay. The first section is truly reading comprehension because they are asking you to read college level work and be able to then summarize and or paraphrase the information. Um, I know as a SSD professor and teaching reading at another county college in New Jersey, I spent a lot of time with summarization and paraphrasing skills. And even at my 200 level courses, sometimes students kind of forget what the rule of three looks like and what summarization and paraphrasing really is at the academic level. Similarly, they are asking to have students prove their ability to cite and to use research skills, which again is something that is definitely reinforced in college, but sometimes forgotten about. And then finally, they are looking for that clear and concise writing to show that you have the academic aptitude and the writing aptitude to be a teacher in the great state of New Jersey. Tip two, um, this is again, immediately read for meaning and look for the so what. The reason that I say look for the so what is because as you're doing that reading comprehension with those two essays, you want to make sure that you're determining that specific position pre presented in each of the articles. They are going to vary. They are not going to reiterate the same content. Then you are going to identify the details that support the position from both of the essays. And you want to make sure that you address all of those main points presented in the essay. Now, keep in mind in the source based essay, you still need to put forth sort of an argument, and you must do that rather quickly. Um, on the Praxis Core, you are expected to put forth an argument that shows that your source based essay, that you truly understand what both of these folks are saying in the articles, and that you can synthesize the information and really address the fact that they're both fighting for something in a way, and that you have the ability to read both of these articles and comprehend them, and then of course paraphrase and synthesize them for the ETS folks. This is pretty important, um, and by using this sort of skill, you can look at those distinct opinions in each piece of writing, compare these opinions side by side, demonstrate the nature of the controversy, do so in just 30 minutes, and of course use that collegiate writing. Pretty big deal very, very heavy task, and it's important to get right away to the reading for meaning and looking for the so what in both of these articles. For tip three, um, I still tell my students to organize. Now, of course, you do not necessarily need to brainstorm. You do not need to do a web, but I highly, highly suggest that you do this. And in this essay, I suggest a, a four-paragraph approach. The first, immediately, you're going to state the topic using a declarative sentence. You're going to use background knowledge directly from the prompt. Please do not cut and paste from the prompt, even if that's an option, because as you know, that would be plagiarism. You're going to summarize the information that was provided by ETS. For paragraph two, you're going to identify the main points in the first essay. You're going to summarize those key points, and you are definitely going to reference the author. Paragraph three will be identical, except you will be focusing on that second article, referencing that author as well. Now, paragraph four for the conclusion 
what I suggest you do is kind of come up with a statement that identifies the main ideas in both of the essays, but in like a more general broad stroke way. You want to create a final connection between the authors and their individual stances. And what I love is just having a little bit of a transitional phrase to sum it up on one hand, on the other hand. It shows that you are using some uh, transitional phrases, which the ETS folks love, and it also shows your reader that you are concluding your essay. Tip four, remove the I from your paper. Unlike the argumentative essay, the source-based essay does not want your personal opinion. Instead, you are simply summarizing the opinions of two different writers. Many test takers find the summarization to be a little bit easier than coming up with their original opinion like they had to do with the argumentative essay. And of course, the task of choosing and defending an opinion on an important societal issue can still be intimidating because you will probably see this on a topic that you do have opinions for. But summarizing these multiple sources is the key idea of what is being assessed in this essay. Keep your opinion out of it. Tip five, I definitely suggest you commit some sentence starters to memory. Um, unless your essay response doesn't address the topic of, at all, there is not going to be a completely right or completely wrong answer on the Praxis Core essay. But what is important is to kind of pull in some information and to use those higher level writing skills to show that you have sentence variety, that you are on track, citing your sources, and you have a solid starting point for your sentences. So although they're not necessarily sentence starters, I love these, these transitional phrases. According to, although McLeod believes this to be true, Martin states, whereas Martin states, McLeod disagrees. On one hand, all of these show some collegiate levels and higher level writing skills, and I definitely suggest that you work some of these into your teaching, I'm sorry, your writing repertoire. Tip six, I definitely suggest that you maybe take a screenshot of these and keep some of these transitional phrases in your head as well. Having these ideas and these phrases as you're writing so you can show the differences for the chain link transitions between one article and the next. And of course, those concluding transitions as you're rapidly trying to finalize this essay is a key, key component of showing your abilities as a writer. For tip seven, I have all your ducks in a row and make sure that your facts are in check. The reason that I say this is that sometimes we need to go back almost as if when we are looking at our thesis and make sure that you really are drawing on the main points of both of these articles. The ETS folks are definitely looking for you to make sure that you are summarizing the information correctly and you don't want to leave anything out. So get those ducks in a row. For a tip eight, I definitely suggest that you avoid passive voice and use active verbs whenever possible. Now, a lot of students wonder what passive voice is, and essentially, passive voice produces a sentence in which the subject receives an action. I have some examples here that you can definitely look at, but I like to think of it as that popular joke, why was the road crossed by the chicken? When you speak like that and you write like that, it's hard to find out who is doing the action, and that is a perfect example of a passive sentence. When you're summarizing this information, please make sure you're writing actively in a clear and concise way and not in passive voice. Tip nine, don't forget to cite. So important. It honestly, at this level, all they're looking for is the name and date. Whether you are direct quoting or paraphrasing, name and date for each of the articles. You will lose major points if you do not do this. Tip 10, again, edit with intention. On the Praxis Core, the key to good writing is essential for a top score on the source-based essay. To score well, you must have logical production, um, sorry, progression of ideas expressed through error-free writing, just like you did on the argumentative essay. If you watched the argumentative presentation first, you will see that this is the exact same slide as I had in the argumentative PowerPoint. And the reason that I'm saying that is because these 30 minutes are typically what my students complain about the most and saying that the content is not difficult, but the time goes so fast. So practice makes perfect. Try these at home. Come to our mock writing sessions, and we wish you great success on the informational source-based essay for the Writing Praxis Core Subtest.